Hi, Molly. Hello. And it is one o'clock on the dot. I wonder, should we give people a moment or just go right for it? I think maybe if anyone has dialed in, they are purposely ready for us. Um, I guess uh, it's my pleasure to welcome you all here today with uh, an opportunity to chat with Molly Dutit, who's currently uh, exhibiting in our Generation 2022 New Irish Painting Exhibition. And uh, just to let you know, everyone, that we're recording, uh, you'll have a chance to perhaps uh, put some questions in the chat room, which I can address later. Um, but first of all, just want to uh, let you know about Molly's bio. Molly Dutit is originally from North Dakota. She earned a BFA from the University of North Dakota, a post baccalaureate from SMFA Boston, and an MFA from Byrne College of Art at National University Ireland, Galway. She's currently based in rural West Cork. She's had a solo exhibition at the North Dakota Museum of Art and several solo exhibitions with the Mosul Gallery Dublin, who represent her work. She was the recipient of the 2013 RHA Hennessy Craig Award and was shortlisted for the 2021 Zurich Portrait Prize at the National Gallery of Ireland. She was twice awarded the Elizabeth Bryn Shields Grant, has received an Arts Council Agility Award and recently was awarded a bursary from the Arts Council. You can learn much, much more about Molly and her, and her work on her website at mollydutit.com. So I would um, encourage you all to check that out because she does a great blog as well. Um, so Molly, your, your, Molly's work is derived from memory, a celebration of everyday moments and personal experiences. Her works contain a weighted sense of humor and explore topics around stillness and memory. So Molly, to kick off, you said in a recent piece of writing in the VAI news sheet that I've adjusted my process over the years to best suit my circumstances at any given point. I've worked from photos and abandoned it. I've worked from life and abandoned it. I'm currently working from memory, memory and will probably abandon it. The paintings on view in, in the Generation 2022 uh, show recall memories of your youth in the uniquely designed lake home of your beloved grandparents. Is following memory in your work sustaining you now in your practice? Yes, I would say um, there's something about painting for so long, doing any activity for so long, you start to realize what's um, that common thread that keeps coming back. Um, so it is memory and being able to pick and choose, like having the photos around me, but maybe not painting from them directly, but just allowing just their essence to sort of infiltrate my my own mind and see how that comes through. Um, and then fighting with the idea of not remembering and trying to articulate that onto a surface has been something that I've enjoyed the challenge of. Mm -hmm. And I mean, has, has your painting practice been affected by living in now in rural West Cork? You're in the middle of nowhere down at Boreen which I can attest to from my visit. You can, you can. <laughs> um, uh, has, it, has, have any changes occurred before that or has memory become even increasingly important to you as you um, make work? I think memory has um, always been important to me. The biggest change since coming here has just been sort of having a true breath of air. Mm. Um, there's something about cutting a lot of things out of your life. I mean, my life is quite simple here. It's quite, um, excuse the crows, um, quiet. And in a way that can be frightening, but then it's also allowed for a lot of time. So it's a lot of time with sitting with the paintings. They're taking significantly um, longer to make. Um, and that might not be rendering something but literally just sitting and sort of staring at an image living with an image um 
you visited my home studio and it literally is kind of a one-stop shop. I live and work and cook and eat and read all in the same space. So as I'm living with the paintings, they're informing me all the time. And before I lived here, I was living um, just in a busier circumstances where I think I was feeling rushed to make work. Mm. So this has really allowed me to slow down. So perhaps just for some attendees who might not know, can you give us a little bit of background on, about the work before I venture into a couple of other questions that have taken you to where you are now? Uh, just the progression? Practice, yes, in general. Yes. Do you know, um, so as I moved into this body of work, um, before that, I was making very small paintings, um, about five by seven inches. And they were much like a diary, like of just things happening moment to moment, sort of my morning cup of coffee, I'd paint it. Um, books that I was reading, I'd paint it. And they became like this very, things I wanted to remember. Um, and then slowly something just shifted where it's more like, you know, actually I'm remembering that piece of toast and egg that my mom made me when I was five, mm -hmm. wanting to come through. And that's what's progressed. And then it's led into the paintings, which are on display right now of really diving back into those childhood places. Mm. Is that helpful? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, you say that you enjoy an excavation when painting. Tell me more about that. I think you mentioned that in the recent article. Also. Yeah, it's like, I'll be painting something you know, I was paint. I'm trying to think. Oh, like on um, one of the paintings that's shown right now, it has a background of, or or the there's a wallpaper, and I specifically remember this wallpaper. It was bright, sort of oranges and reds, flowers. I just remember this floral pattern. We don't have any pictures of that. And all I remember is just sort of the basics of it, which you feel, you know, in my mind, I can feel it. Getting that out into, onto a surface is another thing. And so I've really enjoyed that sense of searching. And um, do you think your recollection of memory is correct or is it something I see your some family member is has dialed in here, so um, they may have Chris may have a different memory of your grandparents' house. Is it very specific to yourself? Because they are very strong images. They do really bring about a sense of place. All right. So this is something that I'm very interested in, um, which I've started to kind of think a lot about. And it's something that's coming up in um, a lot of contemporary literature right now. It's called auto fiction. Mm. And it's this idea that you're telling your own story, you're probably embellishing, um, but it feels true. And I feel like that really explains the paintings, that these are my memories and this is how I remember it. And I think childhood can, if we choose in certain situations can become romanticized. Is that okay? Is that not okay? I don't know, but I really loved that bedroom and I really loved that wallpaper and I want to express that. Um, in how it made me feel. Yeah, so I think you say something about how, how you can make an object or space just as emotive as it is in your mind mm -hmm. that you're mm -hmm. striving for in that as well. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're trying to share that emotion about the memory or the being in that place. Yeah, yeah, the like sense of, sense of comfort. Mm. 
And um, also, you mentioned that the title of each work um, is like a trail of breadcrumbs from your own mind, which I love that, that um, uh, image. And it's important to you that the titles are non-linear and that the viewer is left with more questions than answers. Can you expand upon that a bit? Sure. Um, we'll just stay on the same painting of the wallpaper. Um, so that, that painting is titled Bee Sting Naps. And um, there's sort of, I mean, it's a bedroom, so maybe that's where you nap, but it, it's, it's not exactly a one-liner. But I do remember that there was a summer where I ended up getting stung by a bee. And you know, it was one of those really warm summer days and it was a lot of windows in this particular bedroom and got stung by a bee. And I just remember going up and laying on the left-hand side of the bed or the left-hand bed and um, taking a really long nap. And I'm sure it had something to do with if my mom had given me some Benadryl to sort of like calm me, um, just the the shock of being done with a yeah. you know, over, over a bee sting, but I don't expect a viewer to find that narrative, but there is something really, I can find my way back to that narrative personally, mm -hmm. which is important. Mm -hmm. So it's sort of a seed that for people to explore. Yeah, that. yeah. Yeah, um, and um, color is, is, you said that color is the main motivation for the work. I mean, okay, you're, the, the, the topic is, or the content is memory, but color is the first thing that you approach. Is, is that a motivation or is that how you approach things? You start with the color palette and go from there or you start with the idea? I always start with the idea, but I think color is the thing that really excites me and it probably has been since a child. Um, and I think a lot of my influences come from film, especially. Um, and I, I was recently writing about all the films that have influenced me. And as a kid, like, a child, I, I was obsessed with The Shining. And I know it had nothing to do with the content, but it had more to do with um, just the, the framing and the patterns and the bright technicolor. Um, I brought some props today for you and I, because I thought this might come up, but I went through a bit of a phase of making charts. So, a lot of artists would do that. Yeah, I, and it's I, yeah, it's so handy, so handy. Yeah, and um, who was it? There was Helen Blake in the show. Has oh, an yeah. incredible um, catalog of these uh, colors and shapes and whatnot that she uses as a as a guide to not repeat herself, or whatever. But it is extraordinarily helpful. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, so helpful! It's like. Because once you get a color right in a painting, that's fine. But if you remember how to make that, I guess it's like teach a man to fish, <laughs> you know, keep, keep notes. And you write a lot. So, I mean, I know you read a lot and you write. Uh, I mean, do you feel that you're using another muscle? Does it, does it connect in with your painting a lot? Do those two things talk to each other? I had no idea that like, I had any capacity for writing or like that it was helping inform the work or it just sort of evolved strangely. Um, so it's the way that your humor comes out a lot more in the writing maybe. I mean, it, it's <laughs> hard to do it with one painting and an image and what, what, what it's up to the viewer to really connecting with your humor with with your writing it's very direct you know where you're coming from with that yeah. yeah yeah it's casual too I think there was a friend who once complimented me on like my emails she was like oh I really enjoyed reading your emails and I was like oh 
okay. Um, but that was kind of one moment where I was like, oh, I guess maybe I'm, because I enjoy it. Yeah. yeah. And the blog is going well. People people really enjoy that as well. What, yeah. what, what do you do in the blog? Just tell folks. So I have like, I do a, a bi-monthly newsletter as well. And I'll just sort of run through a painting. I'll say, oh, much like I just did with Beasting Naps, I'll sort of tell the story of what happened. Um, or I'll just do like, I, you know, my, my recent post on my blog was all of the films that I have, not all of the films, but films I could remember. And just at a, at a random order, I kind of took an afternoon, I wrote out all these films and little maybe like sentences about the memory associated with that that film yeah and they're they're, they're great um you do learn a lot about you I, I, and i guess i suppose you reveal a lot about yourself in those you it allows you to open up and reveal did the last couple of years i mean i i i know where you live which is quite isolated but you, at least you're close by to to a family that the, the last two years of the pandemic did that suit you or you I mean did blog really flourish during that time i mean was it a good way to connect with people it was and i think <clears throat> i had someone help me redesign my website and when we did that she said oh we'll do it you know i think you need a journal and i was like okay and then i just started really accessing it and using it more and more and more so that's sort of how it came about i think like a lot of people the pandemic it shook me, but like in, in a really good way and made me re-examine a lot of things in my life quickly um, and make changes quickly. Mm. And it's brought me back to Ireland. Yeah, I suppose that's what I was gonna ask you too, is that that pull towards Ireland? What is it about the place or the people that brings you here and continues? We're lucky to have you, we're glad to have you, but what is it for you? The, that that pool um the well it's the closeness to nature I do know that you know I walk out my front door and I can see cows um and there's also like a very <sighs> simple is the wrong word but there is like a very nice simplicity to my life here that I have created. I wouldn't say it's necessarily of the the culture everywhere in Ireland. You know, that's too um, broad of a term, but it's just you find your place, and I think you're you're good there. You know, but it's it's taken a few tries. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed during the uh, this uh, so artist. Um, uh, have a great way of connecting by Instagram and you've got a lot of friends on Instagram and uh, the opening for the show brought together a lot of people that had never met before and that was a real pleasure for everyone did you enjoy that eventually meeting some of these artists that you've had dialogue with oh my gosh yeah and it's so strange when that happens because I think we're we're definitely of the first sort of phase of of living life this way, way where you meet someone um virtually and you know them virtually for so long and then all of a sudden it's their face um in real person it it was a joy to be able to to reconnect especially at the opening and meet so many artists that I've followed for so long and to see their work yeah in person yeah exactly um going back to the it was lovely for me to see everyone too and connect. It seemed like a really happy time for everyone because we're only just really opening up to getting back together again. But back to the painting practice. And um, you've said also that a painting is, com it's a, a nice way of talking about it. A painting is complete with a sense of a crisp clicking closure. It's like a door locking shut. This finality to the image is also difficult because it means you more than likely will not return to this particular subject. Is that the case for you? I mean, is it very much each painting uh, are very individual things, objects, they, when they finish, they're over and you move on to the next one? Do you have a lot of things going at the same time? 
I tend to have um, quite a few going at the same time and they sort of just like rotate in and out. Um, and that's exactly it because um, the more that I paint, the more I realize that it's just a kind of working towards something like if, if I know my method, I become very bored. So there's a lot of like maybe throwing down some um, solvent to like erase something and letting, like letting something get built up. And it becomes such a kind of mess mm. that eventually you just have this feeling that you know that the mess has somehow like sorted itself out and you just need to back off. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And I've just had, um, just reading, um, in the chat room that Bernadette Kiley, the artist here in Kilkenny, uh, two questions. Uh, one is about the artist you admire and the artist who you might be influenced by. And she's also asking if you might be willing to share some images. So I know that you had worked on a PowerPoint. Uh, and maybe first of all, do you think that you'll be able to access that PowerPoint if you share it? We'll see. We'll see. Let's, let's just go with the question yeah. first about the, uh, some of the artists you admire and artists you might be influenced by. Um. Right now, the, sort of uh, trying to think kind of what angle I should go. Well, Bernard, for example, um, a French painter, he was huge influence on me or has been because he's someone who has um, used his own biography throughout his painting career. Um, I just finished an excellent book by Celia Paul. Um, called Letters to Gwen John, who is also an influence on me. Mm. Um, now, like, I'm just like, oh, who's influencing me? Um, Don't worry. Uh, it, but it, it's, it's kind of obvious by what you, you know, what you absorb when you look at your painting. I mean, you're, they're very skillful paintings, but you have your own very inimitable style of making work and, and almost folk-like in some respects. I, I, I kind of connect with them, um, there's, there's various artists out there that I would think of, but um, you have your own very particular way of uh, um, making work. Do you want to give it a go with the um, PowerPoint to see if you can? So on your screen, depending on what you have open, if you have PowerPoint open, do you? Let me just double check. Yes, I do. Yeah, and then if you go down to the end and do share, we should be, we should have our, you, you'll be able to see me and we'll be in our small boxes up in the upper right, but you might be able to share the PowerPoint. And if you want to go through it quickly, but I'm just following up on, on Bernadette's sort of interest in seeing some more and probably other people would love to see that too, uh, to see some other work. If you wanted to spin through it fairly quickly. Yeah, okay? let me see. Um, let, I'm just gonna go through some slides and see where, where you're um, at. The, yeah. Do you know, actually, I'm going to start with, um, just bear with us folks for a moment. We hadn't actually. Does this work? Yes, indeed. Okay. Good. Has Let everyone, me just do it yeah. like. Someone want to respond by saying yes, if you can all see it. Okay. I think so. I think it's. I would just, um, I thought maybe I'd show this. This is the painting that I've been talking about. So, and I just think it's incredible the way that the show has come together. Um, Rachel Joint actually took this photo, um, but you can see Marcel's paintings back here. Yeah. Um, such a interesting show. If you can go see it, there's just, such a variety of painting. I'm gonna kind of whip through here and see. You do, I'm not sure if you are aware of Lydia Davis. She's a huge influence on me. Yeah. Um, she's a writer who kind of uses, you know, like one of the pieces, is, this is a short story collection. Um, one of the pieces in here was about her, um, writing a letter to the pea manufacturer saying, I don't like the image of that you use for your peas on your bag. 
they're superior peas, but the image is not of high quality. You're going to lose customers, you know, just really kind of things she was writing for a purpose yeah. and then using for her own, um, Kathy, her own Kathy Jones, who's, who, who um, is, is watching, it says she's one of her favorite writers. So I um, haven't read, but I've heard of Lydia Davis. She's brilliant. Yeah, really good. I'm taking a note of that to write. Too. This is where the work was before it got to where it is now. Um, and this was just a, a painting that I had done after I had embarrassingly fallen in front of a group of high schoolers that I was substitute teaching for. <laughs> That's where I first started in Ireland. <laughs> this was a studio shot when I first moved in like two years ago before I found this place. Again, and this is the studio now. Mm. Um, it's so self-contained, it's just like a, a, the womb. You, you walk in and you're totally enveloped by your work. <laughs> you feel like you're in one of your paintings actually. <laughs> okay, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> um, and there's the color charts. Kind of, and I was just thinking of places I would get inspiration from. And this is a walk, so I don't have a car. It's sort of something that I, I thoroughly enjoy that I walk everywhere. Anyhow, um, just finding little bits and pieces around my surroundings that help me build a palette, even if it's not through paint. This is, I was just kind of, thinking of where the memory started. And it happened kind of early on with some watercolors that I was just kind of like going about. Yeah, Kathy John also asked, asked earlier about the fact that food is a very important part of your life. And she wanted you to talk about the way you engage with eating and food as a subject. It does crop up. We kind of know your diet pretty well from your sourdough bread that you make to your cheese sandwiches. <laughs> I know. And the sourdough like became, you know, I started it before the pandemic and it just, cause I don't have children and I don't have pets. It is my pet. I feed him every day. Mm. Um, I just baked today. Um, but there's sort of like a slowness to that and the process. I think that there's one in here. There's another. Oh, Mary Tyler Moore. I know. Um, I can go back, but if you can see on the left-hand side, the reason that this is in here is because I think I learned so much more about my process through just like everyday activities. And often when I'm baking, I just realize that I need to, I'll read a recipe and then I need to write it out. So you can see I've written out everything. And then I go and make it. And so it's sort of like this need to prep, make sure things are okay, okay, you know, kind of like, and I think of that's sort of how the paintings work out in my mind. I can feel something that I'd like to paint. Mm -hmm. And maybe on my walk, I kind of like something comes, oh, I think I know how I would use paint to do that. Um, I guess following a recipe too is fairly predictable. You know what you're going to get at the end, pretty much if you get it right. Yeah, yeah. And so um, being comfortable with the subject before I go in, mm. you know, working a little bit and then sort of like ad limbing as you go. I mean, and that's often how a recipe for me at least is. I rarely follow them to a T. That's very difficult activity for me. <laughs> uh, making sure you have your ingredients, things like that, that you're just sort of like, um, trying to think that's the blog, but let me see here. Yeah. You were saying, and this was another thing where you see like bits and pieces that are influencing you. And this was a program that I grew up watching as a kid, they would show reruns. Um, but even as a child, like I was obsessed with her apartment mm -hmm. and sure. the aesthetic 
the colors. It was that technicolor way of filming. Yeah. So there was a lot of presence in those rooms, both her and Rhoda's apartment. Yeah. Yeah. So let me see here. If you wanted to, I'll just run through. But this, and then these were the, the show at the Molesworth. This was the the image that they used for the um, super postcard. And is this from a family home or a memory or? Yes. So these were, my parents still have these chairs and they're like a velvet. Um, and this was at, this was in one of, it was in the home of theirs that they had in Bismarck, North Dakota. And um, they just kind of sat nicely within the, the living room. And um, this was one of the first sort of larger painted, like this was when the work started to scale up for me. And when I say that, this is like maybe 16 by 18 inches, you know, it's not very large at all by most standards. Um, but it was, yeah, the work really kind of transformed here, learning how to like handle, you know, putting in this, but then making sure that the, the colors behind that were correct. And then navigating that back and forth is something I really enjoy, like not planning it out too much, sort of having to fight with the painting and enjoying that. Yeah, it's a real skill to create an atmosphere in such a small space with the main thing being two chairs, you know. We're all filling in our own narrative into that. <laughs> there. What do they do? What's on that coffee table? Are they watching TV or are they chatting? Or are they looking out a window? Whatever. <laughs> that's true. And I guess that that's like stuff that I don't think about. You know, I just think about these chairs, but I think that that's why they start to pose those questions to you. Mm -hmm. because I'm not trying to yeah. prompt Hopefully. those responses. Yeah. Want to move on? Sure. Um, let me see. You just let me know. This was a book that was just recently brought to my attention by a good friend, um, Wabi Sabi. I'm not sure if you're familiar with the... No, I'm not. So basically, the it's, it's a Japanese aesthetic, but it's also like a way of um tea ceremony oh yeah and it's it's a very difficult thing to articulate in english but what i've gained from reading this and thinking about my own work is it's it's loving things that are imperfect um and and i think that's really like empowering on how I've started to think about my work that you're I do think of painting and making a painting as an act of love and when you <laughs> if you you love an object you start to really love it and you start to care for it and even when it's flawed you continue to try and correct it and I think that's the joy of painting for me. Mm -hmm. You know, it's not getting from A to B in a direct line, but making mistakes and navigating them. Yeah. And being able, able to articulate it in an aesthetic such as Wabi Sabi was like, bingo, you know? Sounds like it was made for you, all right. Yeah. You want to move on to a painting because um, we have a question, um, oh. Sarah Baum. Um, who who says she'd love to hear more about scale. It seems to her that ra that the radical choice nowadays is to make something small. And you're making small work. So yeah. that, that makes me nervous to be like the zeitgeist. <laughs> <laughs> or against the zeitgeist. Yeah. Or, yeah. Um... Although there wasn't that many large paintings. I mean, maybe... Brian Hart in the show is the biggest, but and Philip Gerald and a few others, but yours are quite intimate and draw you inwards, and that smallness has and that scale has something to do with it as well. 
Is yeah. That, is that important to you? I think it's just natural. It's natural. Like, yeah. It's just natural that I like stay because even, you know, when I talk about my work growing and it's, it's not large by anyone's standards, um, it feels big to me, mm. you know, and I'm a shorter person. So yeah. <laughs> I think I've always just been used to being small. You know, I was like the youngest of the cousins. I was always a kid um, in family, family situations that smallness is just something that I've like. But it is a confidence there. I think the confidence in knowing, you know, th th this painting that's up on the wall at the moment, uh, what's that one called? That is feasting naps. Yeah, that's the wallpaper you, you referred to earlier. Mm -hmm. It's so self-contained and says so much in, in the, you know, we all would have memories of little single beds and rooms with wild big old wallpaper on the wall. But this is very particular to you in your grandmother's house. Um, yeah, it's really beautiful. Thank you. No, it was, um... Yeah, like now that I'm looking at it, I'm thinking about all of the things that sort of, do you know, the left-hand side of the room, there's like just that small door, mm. you know, and when I'm painting that, I'm I'm not just thinking about the door, but I'm also thinking about the things that are behind that. I remember there was like puppets, like a whole like set of puppets in that closet. Um, and I wonder, does that inform the painting? Mm. I don't know. And um, I, I don't think he would mind me sharing, but I'm glad to say that the three paintings in the exhibition are going to enter the Butler Gallery collection um, based on a wonderful gift by Brendan Burgess, who I think is, is in with us today, who's become an incredible patron of the gallery. And we're so grateful and delighted to have these three paintings in the show. So I look forward to including them within other works in our collection galleries in the future. So thank you, Brendan. Big shout out to Brendan. Yeah. <laughs> Shall we move on? Order. Yeah. Um, again, I think, this is something I think about a lot is, do you know when people share their family photos and like, it's okay for a moment and then you get really like exhausted of it? You're like, I do not need to see another you know, vacation photo, it's a worry I have because my work is so personal. Um, but this is source material for me in the sense that this image brings up more in my mind than it would in yours, obviously. But, you know, I can feel my feet on those tiles and I can remember those trousers were very itchy <laughs> and Amazing. my mom actually made those for me and all of those things are very visceral mm. and so I think my job in order to make this communicable to someone else is to take those feelings and transport them and maybe that is strictly through figuring out the pattern on that, on those trousers and making a painting, you know, that, that brings that to life. Um, and I think that goes back to the wallpaper a little bit. Yeah. And then it, you're setting yourself a task by trying to, to reproduce that in some way. Yeah. And yeah. this bike is just so sweet with the little thready things out of the handlebars. Um, whatever they were. This was the, your yeah, the streamers. Stream. Yeah. Yes. And this, so this one is also in the Butler. Um, and this is a gift my dad gave me when I was five. It was a birthday present and he upcycled a bicycle um, and spray painted it bright yellow and then put um, Sesame Street stickers on them and then streamers, and it had a horn. <laughs> and that was outside of the house that we were living in at the time. Amazing. So, and I wanna say, oh, I think that's it. It's, kind of, it's very American, I suppose. I mean, they are, I suppose, the North Dakota, the, 
the wood uh, building, the wooden building, the, the deck even in that um, uh, earlier painting. It, it, it is quite, it does have a real, you know, American feel to it. So uh, can I ask you something? Because this is something that I've been worried about. Um, when people mention that, and then I've started to think a little bit more um, openly about it. Um, I think about someone like Gregory Crudson or um, Alex Soth, and they're these photographers who I think also have a sense of um, Americana to their work, but it remains accessible. Mm -hmm. And I think that's something that's very important to me because I don't, I don't see these as American in the sense. Mm. I suppose filmic maybe is a way too, because it is, they, we, we've all been brought up on American movies and, and TV. And so they are kind of images that you'd relate to, you know, you, you would feel that we're all comfortable with, I think by um, uh, the nature of what we, we've looked at ourselves. Mm. Uh, so um, you're, you're, you're comfortable, you're not comfortable with it, you're wondering about that? Well, I guess it's sort of like, I just wanna make sure that they're accessible to all audiences. And I, you know, I'm, 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 I think they are, but the, it is a concern, I suppose. It would be like if the reverse were, were happening, where if, so if um, someone who had more, I don't know, Irish, looking images images being shown in America. Yeah. Would they be communicable to the audience? Um, would I they look Irish? I'm tired of that being asked, what's Irish about your work? Or I think nowadays, really, the work is more universal and global the way you look at it. We're all so saturated by media images and mediated images that really we're all very much on the same page about how we look and we see. So there isn't, there is not very much out there, maybe bar landscape or artists that may use Celtic mythology that is intrinsically Irish. Now there's a debate, you know, I'm sure a lot of people would have an opinion about that, but I think um, the, the American end of things, so you know, it's probably the wrong way to, to talk about it, but I think probably the more cinematic or the, the, the our memories of what we, we see as well is, 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 is something we're all very comfortable with. So yeah. I would say, yes, we are, but you know, um, I wouldn't be describing it so much as American, although Bernadette uh, Kylie had asked the question around the same time, uh, how do you feel about describing your work as, as particularly American, but not, um, uh, yeah, I think you've answered that perfectly. Um, uh, there's some, another question coming in from Lee Shanahan asking, um, how long does it take for a painting to reach that final stage? Uh, she says, um, if it's Lee, if it's a, I'm not sure, male or female, uh, also finds it very important to sit and live with painting for a period of time after that post painting stage. Is that the case with yourself? I know, I, I know when you finish, you kind of, as you said earlier, it is completely finished, but um, does it take you a long time for each painting? Yeah, and, and um, time is sort of a, a funny thing in that sense, because it is a lot of sitting with them, living with them. And then all of a sudden, I mean, I was, um, there was a painting that I think you were looking at when you had visited me and we both said, yeah, but it's not done. You know, right. which one was that? No, that was the, <sighs> it was just a, a plain building. It was like a restaurant. And there oh, was yeah, nothing. Yeah, yeah. And I, I mean, I, I sat with that. So you, I think you were here in January, February. Um, when I really have not touched it much since. And then two days ago, there was like this moment where I was like, oh, it just needs a car. I just need to put a car there. And the car took, I don't know, 45 minutes, half hour. And I knew it was done. Yeah. 
So the act of painting, like it's not this labored. And I think that's a mythology. And actually, this is something that Celia Paul talks about that mm. um, she, she's like, I get frustrated at the painters talk about being in the studio and doing the work and how many hours they're painting. And I think um, the slow process of living and being and accepting the fact that something's not done, but that you're allowing it to kind of mature in your mind before you attack. I think that comes with experience too. I mean, the long, the, the years that you have been painting now has really um, instilled in you that confidence of knowing when to stop, when to leave it, when to come back to it and when it's mm -hmm. finished. So mm -hmm. that's really important. Mm -hmm. And you just keep getting better and better, Molly. <laughs> I appreciate that. Thank you. <laughs> Really do. Um, Kathy Johns um, noted here in the chat room that she just saw the wonderful film The Quiet Girl on Colin Kuhn and wondered how that plays into this discussion of Irishness, Americanness. The domestic focus resonates strongly, she feels, in your work. I don't know if you got to see that film. It's in Irish Gaelic. Did you? I'd say you'd like it. I haven't seen it yet, but I read the book. I I, it. Well, that's why I haven't watched it yet, but um, it's Claire Keegan, no, is it Claire yes, Keegan? Claire Keegan yes, yeah. um, and she's, I just read Small Things Like These, yeah. Yeah. which I highly recommend if anyone needs a book. Um, and actually that's a, if I assume that her work sort of works within that same vein, but I think Small Things Like These is an excellent example of, um, literature that depicts Ireland, but is accessible mm. for all. Um, I don't know if um, A Quiet Girl is of the same nature at all. But in a way, I, I mean, I, I've only seen some stills on it and my memories from reading the book, but they do, there's a, a the country house and um, and, the, and the child, you know, it does, I, I can see why Kathy might have thought about that because there is a feeling of um, of rural life and the cottage and the, again, capturing a sense of place by a, a kitchen or a, or a mug or a, a, you know, a kitchen setting. I mean, it completely evokes a sense of the, the, lit, the place that this mm -hmm. that Claire is talking about. So um, yeah, I can see why, um, and the quiet domesticity, Kathy mentioned. That. Yeah, so that, that, that definitely feels, is something that you capture very well in your work as well. Okay. Yeah. Um, Bernadette Kiley is saying that she loves this quote, art stands in for the people we love. Would you see this as something you might identify with? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. For sure. Yeah. Um, a lot of these paintings come from the memory of, um, actually, do you mind if I just go back to sure. this image and I can talk about that? Um, this painting, there's overlapping memories. Um, and the book here <laughs> is a book um, that I was written, I don't know, it, it was a childhood book. Anyhow, uh, my sister and I spent the, a period of time living in this room when our our house was um we it was destroyed by a a flood there was a flood in our town we had to evacuate we lived here for about two or three months with my grandparents but anyhow um the book on the table was the book that i would read to my sister before we would go to bed at night mm -hmm. and you know, this room contains so many memories, so many people. Um, but yeah, I was definitely thinking of, of Maggie when I was painting this. And it is a stand in for us and our relationship to an extent. Has she seen this painting herself? Has she seen it? Not in person, no, but um, she's probably seen it online. She's got a new baby. So 
<laughs> she's investing too much in my work right now. <laughs> Just wondered if she'd have what her feeling was or, you know, does she remember it the same way? Yeah, I wonder. I should ask if yeah. she even remembers that book. Oh, God. So many of us, I suppose, girls would have um, shared bedrooms with our sisters um, and the chats that would go on and the arguments probably as well. The if tape. Girls could talk. <laughs> yeah, yeah, for sure. Um, does anyone else have any questions there? Because we, we've had taken up quite a bit of your time, Molly. It, 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 do you have anything else to add that you'd like people to know before we close down somewhat or we'll see if there's any questions, but uh, people have been good at contributing along in the chat room. Yeah. What so next for you? What are you, are you working on a body of work right now? Right now, actually, I'm going back to the States for two weeks. Very good. Next week. So I'm really looking forward to that. So I'm kind of, this came at a great time, just sort of buttoning things up. Um, and I've prepped a lot of surfaces for when I come back. So I can just dive right back in. Yeah. And you're happy in, in West Cork, down that boring. Yeah. You recently, I believe, got a, an Arts Council grant, which is wonderful. Is that going to allow you to maybe find a bigger space or what are you going to do with that? Is it going to help you with? It's going to help me just sort of, first of all, stay grounded, really focus in on the work. Yeah. Um, actually, I will probably um, just be hanging out here because I'll have a residency at Illin. Oh, excellent. Um, coming up. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to that. And that will allow a little bit bigger space to see oh, how big is the that going to be a big commute for you from where you are? Um, yes and no. But so you'll, you'll go to work there every day. Is that it? Yeah, yeah. So I could go there um, by the bus and the bus. It's like a 20 minute walk to the bus and then okay. um, 20 minutes on the bus. And will you like that having people around as opposed to being quite solitary where you are? Or is that an experiment to- it's, This is well, like a big experiment. Okay. Yeah, this is just to see what's gonna happen, so. Yeah. I'm sure it'll be fruitful and they're great all there in Ireland. So um, I no doubt some interesting work will come about and then we'll be excited to see what things you bring from your trip home and new memories you're gonna bring back and put into those fantastic paintings of yours. Um, um, yeah, everyone's wishing you a great trip to the USA Super. and delighted to hear you talk about the work. Um, Thank you so much. Thanks for sharing a lot there. It's always kind of exposing to talk about your work and open things up. And um, I really valued my visit to you in your home and just was so wonderful. I think it was a stormy day when I was there and it was blowing oh. out it felt like <laughs> yeah. the sea and jm sing or whatever out the window it was so, so wild so i was so impressed with you um with no car and biking it around so um uh thank you so much for being in the show we love the paintings i'm just so proud that we have these now in the in the collection thank everyone's you so saying much. thank you and um appreciating your your input and what you've shared with us today so um molly without further ado you get yourself packing and have a wonderful trip and we'll keep in touch and um, see you on the other side. Okay. Thank you everyone for joining us today. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye.